Welcome along everybody. So today I'm going to be showing you how I made this card and apologies for those of you that have been waiting for a while for this. Um, I'm trying to catch up with the videos. Um, to make this card I used the old oak set, the, turn that the other way, the girl. Um, those of you that watch my videos and I use this girl a lot for different um, figures. I'm using the star from the Nativity 3 stamp set. And I'm using the crib from the Nativity 2 stamp set, which are all available on the Cardio website. Okay, so I'm going to start off um, shading the blue area of the card. So I'm using Versicolor Raw Blue for this, and I'm using one of these blending brushes. So I'm just using my usual technique, just taking a little bit onto the brush, brushing it off onto a spare piece of paper. Sorry, I just moved that out of the way. And then I'm going to start in this corner. Now, unlike most of my other cards, which are quite structured, and as you know, I normally put a frame or some sort of, um, or go to right to the edge of the card. I'm not going to do this with this one because... I think because of the gentle nature of the subject, I wanted it. I wanted the card to be like that. I didn't want it. I didn't want a harsh frame around it, or I just wanted it to sort of gently blend around the edge of the card. I am leaving a little bit of white space, um, because then it it's, it gives it a more natural frame. And then I'm just working my way around. So you can see I'm working around in a sort of arc, and then a little bit across the middle. Um, I don't want too much here or here because that's where the crib's going to go so uh, i do want a darker color up he up here because that's where the star's going to go and i'm using verse color silver for the star so you know i want it to show up and so if i work a little bit darker there then hopefully the star will will show up, especially for the video um sometimes the video on video it's um a struggle to pick up the paler colors Right, and then I'm just going to go back down here and then I'm going to add a little bit more darker colour into that corner. And I think that's probably enough. Again, this is all, you know, by eye when you're doing this at home. You work out when you think it's enough. I think that's probably enough. I'm just going to um, probably shade a little bit closer to the edge of the card here and I'm just going to go once more here where my star is going to go because I want when I stamp the star I want you to be able to see it on the video and then just towel that up into the rest of the card like that okay I think that's probably enough for now I'm just going to bring that down a little bit down to there so we don't have any white in the background here. Right, I think that's enough. Okay, I'm going to put my lid on there. And then I'm going to do the same with the bottom half. So I'm using marigold yellow for this, which is quite strong. Um, so I'm going to, again, rub off most of it onto this piece of paper. And then I'm just going to do the same at the bottom, just gently blend, blend this colour along the bottom like that. Don't want to go too much into the blue because this is obviously the floor of the staple. So um, just merge it a little bit like that. And then when you've sort of got to where you think you want it to end. I'm just going to do it a little bit more randomly because it like that. Then I'm going to take the verse colour topaz, which is also a strong colour. Use the same brush, just brush it over, and again, just work it out onto your. You see, it's a it's a, a darker colour. Work it out onto that on that piece of paper, and then just blend over the top so you get the contrast of the colours. And I'm just going to think do that once more. I don't want, I, I want to try and get the impression of two different yellows, the sort of topaz and the 
so it creates a sort of straw like colour. OK, I think that's enough for now. So now I'm going to stamp my crib. And to do that, I'm using Versafine Clay Fallen Leaves. So I'm going to give it a good inking. And then I'm just going to lay, touch this, sorry, touch this onto my scrap paper like that. Move it out of the way. And then we want our crib to sort of go here. So just keep your finger on it for a minute. And that's a nice image of the crib there. And then I'm going to stamp in my angel. And you've seen me do this before, but I'll just repeat the process. So I'm using Versafine Claire Morning Mist. It's important it's Versafine Claire because once this ink's dry, it doesn't move. Um, I use this for all my, when you see my coloured images in cards of the children and things, this is the technique I always use because you can paint um, colour with pencils over the top of this ink and it, it won't smudge. And then obviously this image is going to be very dark. I don't want it dark. So I'm going to lay off that image onto this piece of paper. You can see it's dark. This is what we call second generation stamping. And then I'm going to place the angel about there next to the crib. And then just press lightly. And we should get a nice image like that obviously we want it power like that because you know imagine if you had this image and we were trying to color over the top of it it'd be way too dark so now we've got let me just put those out of the way i'm just gonna um, wipe my hands okay so now i'm gonna put in the straw around the crib and to do this i'm going to use a color pencil so i'm just going to do some little marks like like the straw sticking out short long you don't have to be an artist to do this this is literally just doing some little lines cross them over not too many and i think we want it to go about that far perhaps a bit more that side and that's enough okay and then i'm going to use a chalk pencil and all the pencils I'm using today are chalk pencils. If you don't have chalk pencils, you can use colour pencils. Um, that's fine. And you can even use inks. If you haven't got either, you can use inks. But um, I think the lovely thing about chalk pencils is that once you've put them onto your card, you can take a baby wipe and just blend them a little bit like that. And that gives that nice soft finish, which I think is what this card is all about. And then I'm going to add a darker colour. I always, I think, you know, I like to add two colours to anything because it just gives that little bit more texture. And then I'm going to blend that in again. And just go once more over the top with the original colour. So really all you're trying to do here is give the impression of straw. So I think that's that's probably enough. And then I'm going to colour the straw in the actual crib itself. Now that's already drawn for you by Wendy. So all you've got to do is just colour over the top of that. The details in these little stamps are just amazing. She's such a clever artist. OK. And then I'm just going to um, colour the, the little head there. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of this colour into the straw just to differentiate that. And then I'm going to take my white chalk pencil and just add a few little marks just to make that look a little bit more um, authentic. OK, now we come on to our angel. And what I'm going to do now is draw the wings of the angel. Now, you don't really don't have to be an artist to do this. All you have to do is just do it almost like a butterfly wing. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start about here. Um, and then I'm going to take the wing out to about there. So now I haven't joined my wings up. Um, it's entirely up to you if you want to. I'm going to take the wing down there and then down there and then back up to there. And then we're going to do exactly the same the other side. So I'm going to have that come in 
try and do them roughly the same width because otherwise it might look a bit odd so it doesn't need to be hugely accurate but you know um, just so they look in proportion and then that comes down like that and then now it doesn't really matter if you make a strong line with your pencil because we're going to cover this up um, in fact I'm just going to put a line there because I want I don't want that indentation there I want that to be like that um, but the bit I'm going to draw now I want you to go a little bit lighter on the pencil because we want this to be the barest of sort of outlines so what I'm going to do is just do a little line across the top of a hand arm like that I don't know if you can see that and then I'm going to come down just in a wavy line to about there and then now this is the sleeve of her of her dress so can you see I've just taken it up to the edge of that wing and then this one I'm just going to join to there like that and then where the bottom of the wing is I'm just bringing the dress down so there's a little bit of her foot showing and then that one will come from about there so just a little bit of a hand showing to there now i've done this a little bit darker so i'm hoping you can pick it up on the um on the video um when you do it at home try and do it as lightly as possible um so you just get the barest outline i'll show you in the original so you just get the barest outline Okay, and then what we're going to do is take a white chalk pencil and we're going to colour that in. So just go across the top where the sleeve is. Now, like I said, if you haven't got pencils, you can use ink for this. Um, the reason it's, I think it's easier using pencils um, because obviously you're filling in a shape. So... Um, with the baby wipe technique and even the uh, brushes it's a little bit difficult to get into these um, you know into these little um, little corners and things but having said that if you want this to be more opaque so you want to cover up more of the body you could use like a little makeup this type of thing or a cotton bud and a new zinc and then you can get right into the base um, but I quite like this look. I like the sort of sheerness of it. Right, now the other thing you'll know if you use chalk pencils, and if you don't, you can see as I'm colouring, I'm getting a, the residue because obviously it's chalk. So um, what you need to do is just pick it up and just blow, blow that away so it's not on your card. And then you go over it until you're happy. I think I've just a little bit more. And then I'm just going to blow that away. OK. And then what I'm going to do is uh, fill in the hair. So I'm going to use, I'm using the same pencils for this because it's easier. So starting with the crown of the hair, I'm just going to run. Now, Wendy's done these lines for you. If you look at the detail in the stamp, all the... All the work is there for you so really you've just got to follow this down and the angel has a profile there now because i didn't want to use any harsh coloring on this i'm just going to cover over that as if it's more hair but that's entirely up to you if you want to the side of the angel then that's that's your choice so i'm just going to do a little bit more coming down there and just some more curls coming out the side there okay i think that's probably enough and then i'm going to go in with the lighter color and just fill that in so that you can't see the white card underneath Again, I, I think using different colours just gives more texture. OK, and then I'm going to go in with the very, the, the much darker one and just 
accentuate where I've been. Now I'm using these colours, you can use any colour you like. Um, and then I'm going to go, lastly, go in with my white and just power the whole thing down. Like that. And I think I'm just going to try and tidy that up at the bottom, make it like that. Okay. So now I'm going to put in the um, texture on the floor and I'm, I'm doing this with, I'm going to use a piece of curved, uh, I've cut a piece of A4 copier paper into a curved shape. I'm just going to move that up so you can see. And I'm going to be using the Versicolor Topaz for this. And again, um, just rub it off, put it onto a baby wipe, just rub it off. Um, I know this is, you know, we always say this, but you want to go gently here. This is a gentle sort of card and you don't want any harsh lines or. So if I just move that around now, you can see there you're just getting the formation of a. Of a line and I'm just going to I'm not going across the whole thing. I'm just using bits of it and um, that could be a bit darker. I'm just using bits of it to get different shapes. You don't want it too uniform. like that and then underneath the where the angels i'm going to put one underneath her like this which i'm actually making quite deep like that and then i'm going to take a flat piece and just run it gently along the back here just to give an impression of that's where the floor ends i, I, I don't want it any stronger than that and then i'm going to put in another Using a straight edge of the curve, I'm just going to put in another mark there. That didn't show, just try that again. Yeah, that's it. And then one up there. And these are really just to make the um, bottom of the barn look uh, more effective and then I'm just going to staple and then I'm just going to rub that in just to blend it all in and take that yellow down a bit further like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pencil and just mark under where the angel's foot is and and then I'm going to go over that in pencil, just this is what we call grounding. This is so things don't look like they're floating in the air. Now, obviously, angels do float in the air. So if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Um, and then I'm just going to blend that down. And that one. And then I'm going to make a few more marks there just to. accentuate a little bit more where she's standing and just to ground that a little bit more and again I'm just going to blend that down this is what I mean about the chalk pencils they're absolutely fantastic for doing this and if you in the meantime you've rubbed out a little bit of the detail of your straw just go back in and add it back in like that okay I think I'm just going to put um more pencil lines there just so it's similar to the original okay i think that's what we've done nearly just cover those over a little bit like that okay so now we're gonna stamp the star and i think you know, as you can see, I'm doing all the stamping and the colouring before I do the wings. And that's because I don't want to be doing all this while I've got wet paint on the card. So I'm using first fine, first, sorry, first colour silver for this, which is an absolutely brilliant um, ink. Stamp it all over, put lots of ink on it. And then we're going to place the star here. 
and I'm going to press quite firmly and hold it in place for a while just to let that ink sink in and there you've got a nice image of the style okay so now I'm going to do the wings and what I'm going to use for this is two paintbrushes I'm going to use um, a, a small fan brush and a little paintbrush now if you don't have these then you can you know you can do this with inks but the reason I'm going to do use I'm going to use a water-based acrylic paint and the reason I'm doing that is because it gives a lovely lovely texture to the to the wings but again if you don't have this um, you can improvise so you can see I've I'm just going to move this paper and I've moved I put a little bit of the paint onto a, a stamp block and I'm going to take my brush and just dip the ends in to the white paint there can you see like that and then I'm going to start I've got to tilt my card for this I'm sorry just start use the edge of the brush and just try and get the shape and then just move it down so you get that lovely textured feeling if you go over don't worry too much because we can use the smaller brush just to correct like that and then you do exactly the same with the other side when we're just gonna run that along the length that we've already drawn and like I say, it's, it, it doesn't matter if you go over your line a little bit because the the wing would be not perfect anyway, would it? It would be, you know, like a wing, obviously. Like, So don't be scared to do this. And if you are a bit nervous, have a try on a... Draw a couple of wings on a piece of paper and then just have a try with the brush. Now, I think I'm just going to put a little bit more across the top there because I've got a little bit more texture on the other side there. Just move that down a bit. And I hope you can see that because you get that lovely texture. Now I'm going to put this brush, brush straight into water um, because especially in this weather, it will dry solid. So if, when you're using this, make sure your brushes go straight into water. Make sure you clean your stamp block um, straight away. If it's not water-based acrylic, then check the manufacturer's instructions how to clean. Then now I'm taking my smaller brush and dipping it in. And this is where you can just correct the mistakes you've made. So you just go in and so we, there's a bit sticking out there. So we just join that up there. Like that. And we've got a little bit sticking out there. So we'll just extend that little bit out there to there. And move that across just to counteract where I've had to come in a little bit. And these don't have to be perfect, do they, you know? And then I just like to add a little bit of, like this, little dots on the edge. So just a, almost like a fringe of the wing. And then just square that off up there. I say I haven't joined mine together, but if you want to, you, you know, you can. It's entirely up to you. And then just bring that down a little bit. Now, you can feel about this for ages, but, you know, once you've got the, the basic shape, I think um, that's okay. This one, because I had to bring that down a bit, I'm just going to bring that one down a little bit too, just to, so they look a little bit more even like that. Okay. Now, I didn't do this with my first one, but I thought this would be a lovely idea for, for a Christmas card. So what I'm going to do now, just move that out of the way, I'm going to take this brilliant glitter, this Glamour Dust, which is available on the Cardio website. And while the paint's wet, I'm just going to sprinkle it all over the wings. Now, the lovely thing about, I really love this glitter. The, one of the lovely things about it is, obviously, when you've done that, just tip it over and... And then I'll just move that out of the way. Now, you're not going to be able to see that too well at the moment. You probably see a little bit of sparkle. But the lovely thing about this Glamour Dust is 
as it dries, it gets um, more and more glittery. It, it's beautiful. It's one of my favourite glitters. So, um, you know, I definitely recommend it. OK, now I know I said I wouldn't go back in, but I'm just going to add some little white marks to the hair now. And just, I just want a little bit of a curl of that side. So I'm just going to go back over that. Just to tone that down. Okay. And I think I'm just going to add a little bit more colour in there. Like that. So this is the card I made today. Um, I'm just going to, you know, I always say this to you, when you've finished your card, just check, have a look, you know, stand back from it because um, you might notice things. And what I've noticed is a little bit of, I don't know if you can see that, a little bit of the pencil mark showing. So all I'm going to do is just go back in my little brush and just tip the paint into that mark. So you can't just to hide that pencil mark a little bit like that i think that's fine okay so that's the card i made today this is a, obviously this is much bigger because it's um, a photocopy but it was the same side and just to let you know this is a six by six card i normally use seven by seven but this is a smaller card for the smaller image okay so i hope you've enjoyed um, watching me make this and I hope to welcome you along the next time. Thank you for watching.